For those of you that don't know, I'm Maggie, and I've recently been asked a lot, what equipment do I use to film my videos? And what equipment do I need to get started on YouTube? So I just figured I'd make one video, lay it all out there, and answer all of your questions at once. Now that I've been on YouTube for a little bit, I can kind of start to anticipate different questions that I'm going to get. And sometimes I feel that it's necessary to put a disclaimer at the beginning of the video and let you know that this is the equipment that works for me and my style of videos. If you are an adventure, travel, video vlogger, this is not really gonna apply to you. Maybe it'll be a really good starting point. But honestly, this is for people who have channels that are a lot like mine, kind of like talking head videos or simple vlogs here and there. This is not gonna be for a wonderful cinematic production. So I just wanna lay that out there. But I think that it's safe to start with what equipment do you need to get started on YouTube? And honestly, it's nothing fancy. For two years, I filmed exclusively on my iPhone. I didn't even start with this generation of an iPhone. When I first started my channel back in 2017, I was filming on an iPhone 6. And one thing that most people tend to know, I think, is that this rear-facing camera on iPhones is actually of higher quality than this front-facing camera. However, because I'm filming videos and I wanted to make sure that I was in the frame and that the lighting was looking okay, I always filmed using my front-facing camera. And even still, I felt like the video quality was fine. I also used a small Amazon Basics aluminum tripod. This was really handy. I would sit on one stool I would put the other tripod on another stool and adjust it to my height to make sure that everything looked fine. You can see it's really little and short, but here you can actually extend the legs and make it taller if you want it to be. And it also came with this little phone adapter that attaches to the top here. So your phone can fit nice and snug into this little adapter. And so this was my camera setup for the first at least year of my time on YouTube. After that, I was like, okay, what can I do to start enhancing my videos without spending a lot of money on fancy equipment. And so one thing that I did go out and purchase is a Rode mic that attached using the audio jack at the bottom of the iPhone 6. But then of course, as Apple does, they went in and they changed exactly how you listen to music, how you plug in headphones. And so that Rode mic was no longer useful for me at all. So instead of opting to buy a new mic that did fit my iPhone 10, I realized that the sound on those videos actually sounded just fine when I used this phone and nothing else attached to it. So if you're just getting started, you haven't even started a channel yet and you feel like you need to go drop thousands of dollars on camera equipment, don't. Because what if it's a hobby that you don't even end up liking and what if you hate photography after that and then you can't even use a camera later you know what I mean hedge your bets a little bit and just start filming on your iPhone I promise that the quality is good oh and in case you're curious I bought all of my filming equipment on Amazon and I have an Amazon storefront and I've linked all of the tech equipment that I use to film these videos in the storefront that I have in the description box below. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in picking up anything that we talk about today. Similar to the Rode microphone, a couple of other accessories kind of started to make their way into my filming routine. And what I did was I used this clamp here to attach it to the small Amazon Basics tripod. It could have also held my phone if I wanted it to, but the most important feature on this accessory is actually this small ring light. And that was just because I have this big light that I film with now but for the longest time I really couldn't figure out how to make it stand up properly I felt like it was really top heavy so I avoided using it so when my brother gave me this to film with this became my companion so if you too don't have a lot of space in your apartment or maybe you just don't want to set up big lights every time something like this something small would be a really good alternative but this was one thing that helped amp up filming on my phone because it did give me a little added light. And since I was filming in such close proximity to me with my phone that needed to be pretty close for the sound to be good, this all worked out and was useful for those purposes. So that's everything that I used for the first two years of filming on my channel. And I really felt like things were fine. No, I wasn't gonna be winning any awards for the videos that I was putting out, but I was still able to build this community, build a subscriber base, and enjoy what I was doing on YouTube without having super expensive equipment. But after two years of having my channel, and once I hit 10,000 subscribers, I was like, okay, I think that you've probably earned the right to buy yourself a camera. And so I actually cashed in some awards that I had gotten from work and I purchased the Canon EOS M50. Now I have mine in the white body and I really love it. I feel like it's kind of unique looking, but if you're somebody who wants something a little bit more classic, it does come in black as well. 
And I'll be honest, for how much research I do on products all the time, I did very little camera research. I basically watched videos just like you're doing right now to figure out what was the best camera for YouTube in 2018 and 2019. <laughs> and I do have one channel that I love and that I trust called Think Media, and they determined that the Canon EOS M50 was one of the best for the past couple of years. I don't claim to know everything about this camera, and I'm not gonna try to act like I do, but I do wanna point out the key features that really convinced me that it was the best camera for my purposes. The first one being that it's known as a mirrorless camera. Mirrorless cameras are known to be lighter, more compact, a little bit faster, and overall better for video than DSLR cameras. And because they're oftentimes a lot lighter, they've been ranked really, really high in the vlogging community because people oftentimes are walking around, you know, with their camera outstretched. So naturally you would want something that's a little bit lighter if you're holding it out from your body walking around for hours at a time. Another reason I was completely sold on the EOS M50 was the way that the screen flipped out for me to see myself while I'm filming. There are a lot of vlogging cameras on the market where the screen will flip out in different directions so that you can actually see yourself and ensure that you're in frame always. Now the most popular camera that a lot of you have probably seen that has a screen that flips up, that would be the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark Two. That is a really great camera and it was compared to the EOS M50 But the reason that I ended up avoiding that one is because the screen flips up for a lot of people This is not a problem But if you want to attach a microphone to your camera typically those ports that attach the mic to it They kind of slide on are located on the top of your camera So if you have that screen that flips up and you want the mic to go on the top of your camera You can no longer see yourself in the screen and use a mic at the same time So I ruled that one out there are other cameras that flip down toward the bottom, which is great because then you can still use a microphone and see yourself at the same time, but for my purposes, I'm always filming with my camera on a tripod if I'm not taking it somewhere and doing some type of vlog style video. So I knew I didn't want a screen that flipped down because that was rendered useless once you actually put it on the tripod. So then my camera could be stable, but I could no longer see myself. The thing that's unique about the M50 is that it flips out to the side. So I can have a mic on the top of my camera, it can sit on a tripod, and I can see myself all at the same time. Those are the two big reasons why I ended up buying the camera, but there are other things that I do love about it and that the settings were really easy to figure out. It also has a touch screen display and so everything is really easy to navigate. The battery life on this thing, in my opinion, is really good. For an average video that I shoot, it takes me about 45 minutes to an hour to record. I've only lost power one time and that was because I tried to shoot two videos back to back and the length of time with all my starting and stopping and everything was about three hours. So I would say that the battery life on this thing ranges anywhere from two and a half to three hours maximum before you have to charge it again. The battery does take two hours to recharge, so I would recommend getting a second battery if you're somebody who does take your camera out to vlog a lot because it'll be really nice if you just have that additional charged battery to slip in as soon as your original battery dies. And that's pretty much it for the camera. But another accessory that I absolutely love is my tripod. I think it's Zomi, and it's the Travel Tripod 2-in-1. Now, why it's known as 2-in-1 is because it can act as a regular tripod that has three legs, or you can actually unscrew the middle portion and it can become a monopod. It also comes with this nice hook beneath it, so if you're carrying around a camera bag and you wanna be able to have everything in one place, and it kind of acts as a weight to keep your tripod stabilized, which is pretty cool. And another thing that I really like is that you don't ever have to pay attention to the way that you're actually screwing on the base of the camera piece that attaches to the tripod. And that's because it is a square, so it can fit on either way that you want your camera oriented. You can just easily flip the camera around without having to adjust the entire tripod, which is really nice. But my absolute favorite feature is that you can set it to where you can tilt the tripod to like a twelfth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. You can get it exactly where you want it. The super cheap Amazon Basics tripod that I used to shoot with on my phone did not have those capabilities. It was like, do you want it like this or like this? Because those were your only two options and it drove me bananas. It's also super light. Pretty sure it's hollow, but it feels very sturdy and very well made. It's definitely on the lower end of cost. I think mine was $43. In addition to my camera and the tripod that I use, I also use this big umbrella light. I have a love-hate relationship with the light that I use. I do think that it produces really pretty natural light. In fact, I'm using it right now and it's really cloudy out and if I were still relying on the natural light that comes from windows like I did when I was filming with my phone all the time, things wouldn't be looking so hot right now. So I am very thankful for it. But 
The cons about this thing is that one, it's really hard to set up. The whole process probably takes like three minutes. I'm being a little bit dramatic, but for my small living space, this is just a really big light. It takes a lot of time to put up and take down. So I end up leaving it up all the time and it just takes up a lot of room in my room. Maybe when the bulb burns out, I'll change to something new. But if I could go back and do it again, I would suggest getting a ring light or some of those little square lights that are often advertised for people who do YouTube. I think that those are a lot easier to set up and take down. And that's pretty much all that I use. Hopefully this video was helpful and really encouraged you to just start somewhere. Don't go out and buy all the most expensive equipment until you know that you're actually committed to this hobby. Your phone will work just fine. And if you wanna take those little modifications to make things just a little bit better and a little step above, that's probably a good stepping stone into buying bigger cameras and more official equipment. If you have any questions about the equipment that I use, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And again, all of the things that I've mentioned today are linked in my Amazon storefront. So if you like this video, then like it, stick around, subscribe, join the community, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.